everyone, welcome to ComicsPriceGuide.com presents Tales from the Geek. I am Erin the Mechanic. This is Michael. That's like the seventh time she's done it. No, that is the she second time. She keeps mispronouncing it. She keeps saying something. I don't know. You I was know, trying to think of something That dot com part is really important. Well, you, that's how you, I mean, if you don't type in the dot com, you can't You can't get go anywhere, where you want to go. You, know? you just have to use Google. And Pretty, who does that, right? Right. Well, no you want to tell, tell all of our fans where we are. No, it's okay. It's a mystery. I mean, it's the same place we've been for how many weeks? <laughs> just and a months? few. Just and a few. Years? Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy here in Austin, Texas. And uh, now we're in the manga that section, is, as you can you tell. You can see, that says manga. I, in my, from my perspective, the camera's backwards, so it says Agnum. But that too. It says manga to you guys, I'm sure. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. So uh, I mean, we you have to learn to read backwards for manga. That's the whole point, right? It's, exactly. Yeah. We were just trying to get you guys a head start. Just learn. So we got some new learn comics. important. I do have comics. So mm -hmm. you, read, you read left to right for comics, not right yeah. to left. You want this one or do you want one of those? I'm going to keep looking at the camera while I manhandle these. Ooh, manhandle. That one. Top one. I like that one. Top one? Yeah. So the bottom one. Then. Got it. Every time, every time. I don't know why she thinks. I don't know why she thinks I'll ever listen. One of these times, I'm just gonna every tell him time. the one that I don't want him to choose, and then he'll what you've the one. chosen is this. As you can see, this is Super Girl, super not girl. Superman, not Being Super Boy. Super... This is Super Girl. Now, if you're not familiar, there's a television program on, I believe, the CW, also called Super Girl, about the same character. It will shock you to learn. But this is this is basically just a new Supergirl series, um, very focused on like her young teenage years, because like in the show, in the modern comics, she's sort of like a twenty something and she's working and right. living. She's already sort of an established hero. This is sort of her like Smallville kind of moment, even though she didn't grow up in Smallville, but it's sort of that time period basically. Okay. So she's like a teenager, she's got all these incredible powers, like she's helping her dad, you know, move like a tractor, and she picks up with one hand and puts it over here, and like, yeah, all this I got stuff. This, dad. But she also has like normal teenage girl stuff, like, oh, she's her, her friends and boys, and, you know, acne and stuff like that. No. So she's got all her same issues. Uh, it's a pretty hefty book, and it's a, I want to say it's like a four-part miniseries, maybe? Um, so it's, it's sort of the first first bit here. I love it personally because Joelle Jones is one of my favorite artists currently working in comics and she does really good work here. Uh, Kara looks really good and it's got a lot of really nice uh, action-y scenes like her flying out at night and helping her dad out and stuff like that. So if you like Supergirl, if you're a fan of the show um, or Smallville again, like I said, it's sort of that but with Supergirl. It's pretty I great. I like it. I like that a yeah, lot. Yeah, Smallville so. was one of my favorites. That is a pretty good one. Smallville was good for its yeah. time. It was, it, looking back, back in the day, looking yeah. back, it's a little cheesy. <laughs> well, now, but yeah. at that time, because was there wasn't like a lot of good like superhero yeah. content out there, like now, it, it, it kind of pales. But oh yeah, it's, I mean compared to it was it was good yeah. at this time. It was the it was the pinnacle. It was like top tier. For so. sure. Okay, wait, wait, what else we got? Well, I have these two. Which one do you want? Here, I'll say it. Rocky Raccoon, huh? <laughs> well, now they're gonna wait. <laughs> Sorry, she said it, so now I have to make you wait. Instead, now you know what's coming. we'll talk about the Hulk. Now, as you can see, oh, it's a woman. This is, as you can see, yes, this is not the Hulk as you commonly have known him. This is, in fact... Hulk as you know her now. She-Hulk. See, you know, She-Hulk. Shulky. Shulky, as she is called sometimes. Not for many years, probably. But I've seen that before in comics. Wow. Maybe I think maybe in Dan Slott wrote her. But, no, this is She-Hulk's new series, actually. And you can see, surprisingly, she's not green. She yeah. is, in fact, grayscale. gray. And, no, she's not grayscale. She is straight she's up gray. She's just gray? Oh. oh yeah, which if you if you don't remember if you're not a fan of Hulk or you don't know your Hulk lore, uh, if you don't have a lot of points in that stat, you probably should listen up, because there are many Hulks, and the Gray Hulk is one of them. He's distinctly you mean different. Many Hulks, like many or yes, like many, very like small many. Hulks. <laughs> there are a lot of them. They're very small. They run around. No. <laughs> That'd be kind of terrifying if they all had, like, the strength of the normal Hulk. Yeah, like, just, like, a tiny so... Hulk punching you and into, into ah! space. No, but this is actually She-Hulk's new series, because if you've been reading Civil War, which, no spoilers, but it's, like, in the first issue, so, you know, spoiler, Not too many. Right. spoiler time has passed. Uh, she goes through a pretty traumatic event in Civil War II, uh, and she sort of is in a coma for a little while. She's awake, she's fine, physically, but she has, you know, a lot of trauma, a lot of PTSD. Right. It's a big, you know episode basically for her and it's it's afflicted her pretty hardcore and so the entire the entire book here is her trying to like assimilate back into her normal life mm -hmm. but 
you know, one of the core things about She-Hulk is that she's always been in control of her Hulk persona, whereas right. Bruce Banner or whoever else generally has not been. Right. It's sort of, not you know, you get angry and then you Hulk out. She can just sort of do it. Now she can't. Now she's sort of lost control of that part so of herself. she can Hulk out now. Woo! She, like, Hulks out and Hulk smashes without Hulk even smash. intending to. So it's a really nice twist on the, like the character it. who was sort of defined by her own like control, sort of losing that control and learning to live without yeah. it and stuff like that. So it's really hardcore. A lot of like really hardcore focus on her like PTSD and trauma and yeah. stuff. So it's a very compelling read. Can get a little little dark at times, but it is really good and I definitely look forward to read more about that one. So. Now Rocket Raccoon. Now we have something a little lighter because that's it's upside down. That's Rocket <laughs> now Raccoon. Now I see why you wanted to end with Rocket. That's, that makes see, sense now. it's a little lighter. It was, it was Rocket great. Raccoon. If you're not familiar with the Oh, Civil he's War, in cage though. He is in cage. He's even grounded and I don't mean like when you get bad grades and your parents take away your Xbox. That never happened to me. I didn't have an Xbox. I had a PlayStation. They took that away. <laughs> there we go. They the took that one out. away. <laughs> they didn't think about Xbox. So I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. But no, uh, this is the grounded sort of. It's almost like a crossover with all the Guardians series. Yeah. No spoilers for why it happens. But in Civil War II, again, also related, uh, the Guardians lose their spaceship, and they are on Earth at the time, so they are all stuck here because, oh, of course, that's great. Earth doesn't have a you know interstellar capabilities no. yet. At least not you know, publicly available. Oh, that's great. And so they're, all the Guardians are stuck on Earth, and Rocket is stuck right <laughs> in New York City. Oh, no. And, of course, he's a raccoon, and he's not very welcome right. in a lot of places. And now maybe And so it's him up. sort of acclimating to life on, on Earth, Earth, which as he a raccoon. hates. He hates Earth. It's the worst. Uh, he criticizes a lot of people for the way they act and behave and talk and treat him. Uh, and he's got sort of a Poor sort of a chip on his shoulder about a lot of things, as you know you would expect. And right. So From it's a really it's a really nice look at like him in an environment where you don't normally see him because usually he's out in space like I got this and he right. shoots his big gun and everything wins. Now he's sort of like on the losing side of things because he's stuck on Earth and he can't get out. So it's a really funny one. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing sort of the more misadventures they yeah. do with that. Uh, and it'll, it'll sort of cross over with the other Guardians who are also stuck on Earth, Star Lord as well as there, and other characters. So check that out if you're interested in Guardians or you want to see more Rocket. So those That's are all comics. our uh, highlighted comics. Let's go through our shout-outs. We've got Civil War. Civil? Civil. Civil Valley, which Silver? is Pokemon. Civil War Civil War 2, War two number, number eight. 8, which final issue. Ooh! Final issue of Civil War 2. I've read it. It's good. It's got a weird ending a little bit. I didn't really understand the first time I read it, but Civil War 2 number 8 Check is out. out. It's the last issue of the crossover, so read that. Read it. Then, we also have the second issue of both, Ghost Rider, which first issue was a while back. Yeah, I remember that. And we that. had uh, Gabriel Luna, who also plays Ghost Rider here at the store, did sort of an impromptu showcase awesome. signing, so it was really yeah. cool. Issue 2 is out this week as well, so if you were lucky enough to come here and meet him and get your signed by him and you liked it, mm. issue two. Oh, and After Death, which we spoke about, We did right? speak Last, about After yeah. Death. Yeah, the, the sort of post, post-apocalyptic, post yeah. weird, like, speculative sci-fi book from, um, I believe it's yeah. Scott Snyder who wrote that. So the second one of those, second of three, so that's 66% yeah. of the way done. Boom. So check that out. And then the second issue of Just Like Suicide Squad, which the first issue was actually last week. So they're oh, cranking yeah, those out that. real fast. That was really quick, yeah. Mm -hmm. I talked about so that So that's week. the second one's coming out of that. And then some one new book that I know a lot of people are excited about is they're finally doing a new, nice and simple G.I. Joe series. That's right. Just a core G.I. Joe team going on adventures, saving the world, all the stuff that G.I. Joe likes to do. So check that out as well. Well, now we have some news. Now that we've jumped through all of our comics. Well, let's have start with we, the, sad, the sad Have news. we jumped through all our comics? Yeah, I believe so. No, I'm not delaying the inevitable. I'm totally just making stuff up. Mm, I'm just, yeah, you are. Totally delayed. All right, say it. So Carrie Fisher, we all know, had a heart attack. Unfortunately. And now, un yeah, unfortunately, she passed away. Mm -hmm. So that actually was, happened today, it, the day we're was, filming. It was posted yeah. a little bit ago that she was stable. and then Yeah, so I was like, yeah. Of, Sort of apparently couldn't couldn't handle it unfortunately. So, so. 2016, you've taken another one. Damn it's it. just not letting go. It's I'm like, like ready for 2017. Like let's go. On like, the we're cliff so or grabbing as many as they can as 2016. I dies. really thought she was gonna make it. Like after yeah. the heart attack, she was in stable condition. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all of, all of you uh, Star Wars fans and other films too. She's yeah, for sure. Amazing yeah. woman. So would definitely be missed. Um, speaking of Star Wars though, it, next year is their 40th. Um, year mm -hmm. with Marvel. 
and so they're going to be doing variant covers. Mm -hmm. They've they're already released some of them. They're awesome. Yeah. All from New Hope. Yeah, Marvel's been so. doing a lot of those really cool variant themes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing they're doing a couple of they've already announced next year Star Wars. They're doing one I'm really excited about with all different characters like interpreted as Venom hosts. Oh nice. So they're doing like a Venom theme. So they usually do sort of a theme for months and yeah. they are they are doing some Star Wars stuff yeah. since uh, 1977's the old New Hope release, so 40 years, which is weird. It's been a long time. I know, time. I can't believe that. It's but crazy. yeah, there you go. Um, oh my gosh, you know what I'm so excited for since we're in the tell manga me. section? Tell me now. Attack on tell Titan. Me. Attack on Titan Season 2 is Never coming out in April. Yeah, well, liar. You mean, liar. You mean that is book over there, here? probably? Oh, yeah. This, yeah, this is this, very This good. book right here, I'm going... Yep. Off, off script. This one right here, this giant book yes, right here. Yes. Is actually so the, the second, second one, season but. of the um, anime is going to come out in April. I watched the first season like three years ago when I was living in Nashville, so I am so ready. I think most of the fans are. I'm gonna have to rewatch season one, of course. And if you're interested, oh yeah, the manga. You can for pick sure, up so. the manga right here, at Dragon's Lair. See, it has these nice big fancy colossal editions. It's pretty awesome. For the low low price of forty nine ninety nine. That's for a whole thing. Great. Five volumes at once. Do it. So do that. Do it. And then, last but not least, Kingdom Heart fans, we got a. Nice I don't know any of them. No, not at all. Not a one. Well, we got a nice little surprise. Um, right on Christmas, they released a screenshots of the third one that will be coming out. There's not a release date yet, but we have seen screenshots from it. So get pumped. All right. And uh, that's done. All. That's all we have for this week. We'll send it off to Shivs and Giggles Cosplay. Hey guys, we've got M and May here in this place, this location, it's undisclosed. Um, it's also unknown what time of year it is. It, um, so today we're going to talk to you about uh, how to pick your first cosplay. We've been seeing a lot of uh, questions about it on some of the groups that we follow, so we're trying to give you some insight into how we pick and what things you can think about. Alright, so a few things that we're going to touch base on are, hey, what is it, what kind of things should I take into consideration when I'm choosing what cosplay I'm going to do? Is there any kind of genre or anything like that? Um, kind of what kind of costume limitations am I going to face when I'm doing my shopping or when I'm drawing or if I'm actually kind of picking a character? Mm -hmm. And uh, just thinking about what you already know and what you can take advantage of. And who you know can sometimes be just as important as what you know. It, it's cheaper to do cosplay if you can just steal things from your I mean borrow them from your friends. I'm totally going to give back those shoes one day. <laughs> Some of the things you can think about are what skills you already have. Uh, we have one friend who's really good with foam and he really didn't know anything about sewing so his first couple cosplays were made entirely out of foam and warbler and they were they were pretty amazing. He ended up with some awards from them. So don't think just because you don't know something it can limit you in any way. Just because you don't know how to sew, there are plenty of other options for making an awesome costume. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, if it's your first time, there's nothing, you know, that it will exclude you from going out and even buying a costume. It may be something that's for you, and it may be something that's not. So it's always great to just at least give it a try and see how it goes. A lot of people that I know, their first cosplays are very, very casual cosplays. Or it's something that they've got thrift store, or they've just ordered something online because they really, really wanted to be Prince Peach. They don't know how to sew, and they just want to be pretty. Um, so those are yeah. all definite great options that you can do that, you know, don't require a lot of set skills. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to do a character from a live action movie because someone's actually built that costume already and you know that it moves in a certain way versus something that's animated. You can just design a costume that looks a certain way and not have to worry about, I don't know, gravity or raising your arms. Raising your arms is difficult. First cosplay, one thing you're going to want to think about is your budget. Starting out, uh, you might just really want to make it look perfect, but that might be a little bit more expensive. So think about uh, where you can cut corners. I think my Anna costume, I got a pattern and then all that fabric, uh, that one ran about a hundred bucks. Yeah. And I think for most of ours, you're going to need to budget at least bucks. Yeah, I think we usually run between 50 to 150 for our costumes, and that's mainly because we do a lot of sewing ourselves. We bought the thread, we'll buy the patterns if necessary. Um, 
and the material and since we like to have our costumes look a little bit more authentic we try to stick away or kind of steer towards a little bit more expensive materials more durable thicker ones that we can kind of distress or that look like something that that character would wear but it's not necessarily something you have to do there's nothing wrong with going in the red dot aisle getting the cheap material or like i said before buying a costume or stealing things from your friends yeah um also like, cosplay is really whatever you want to make of it. We've seen people with costumes made entirely out of... There's paint swatches. Paint swatches. That was great. That was actually mm -hmm. beautiful. I've seen duct tape. Yeah, just like different things. One of our friends, we've met her before from the Hack cosplay group. Um, she will literally just go and see what she can find at Goodwill and put those pieces together. As well. Yeah, so it's really... Just think about however much you want to spend and keep that in mind sort of as you're designing your cosplay. Another thing with your early cosplays, if you can break it down into a bunch of smaller pieces as you get better at it, you can definitely upgrade certain pieces if you love the costume that much. Thanks. Another thing I wanted to try was techniques. So what your cosplay choice for next may be depending on what kind of skill you're wanting to work on. So if it's your first one and you're saying, okay, I really want to do cosplay because I'm really interested in sewing, you might find something that's very, very dependent on actually creating a garment, creating a shirt, pants, suit, dress, all that fun stuff. Um, whereas opposed to I've got a brother who may or may not be a real person who is really, really interested in working with armor. And so one of his first costumes is probably going to be more on the anime side because it's something he relates to, something he'd have fun to do. And he really wants to learn that skill of building with foam, coming with Warbla, and getting all that stuff done. And also to be thinking about um, how well you can move in the costume. Um, sometimes you can design something that'll look awesome, but if you can't move in it and you can't have fun the day of the convention, that's pretty much a no-go. Mm -hmm. What's most important is going out and having fun. Yeah, which kind of leads us to our major topic here. A lot of people are like, I really want to do cosplay, but I don't know what to do. A lot of people are really, really concerned about, I really want to be a person that I look like versus a person that I would have fun doing. So, um, I look nothing like Harley Quinn. Um, any of them at all. Like, at all. Um, but that's one of the ones I have the most fun doing. Honestly, for us, it's we, we do a little combination. We choose what genre, which, which group we're mm -hmm. going to do based on what we really are excited to do and what we want to portray. And then we'll kind of choose which character since there's three of us. Um, and we tend to fight a lot. <laughs> yeah. I think with us, it's a lot more about what character matches your personality versus which character matches your face. <laughs> So one of the things that we like to do when we're designing costumes is we really like to accentuate the female form. So you'll see a lot of our stuff is corsets or, um, and surprisingly, we haven't done any butt padding. They're all really just that big. Um, it's mainly because of cookies. A lot of cookies. So many cookies. I love Christmas. You need a cookie. You want a cookie? Let's get a cookie. <laughs> Some things don't need accentuation. Like we were saying, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm too big, or I'm not big enough, or anything like that. Worried about your shape not fitting your character? Who cares? Forget that noise. Yeah. You don't need that in your life. Mm -mm. So, cheers to cookies. Cheers to cookies. Um, Chink! I mean, that's why, if you're really concerned about it, that's what corsets are for. That's what... Corsets, spanks. Yeah. You know, control I mean? top pantyhose. In all honesty, you love every single person out there that is putting in effort and has a great idea, a great costume, and is having fun, regardless of their size, shape, looks, anything like that. Just feel powerful in your cosplay. Mm. Hi guys, thank you for joining us this week on Tales from the Geek. Hopefully you have some ideas on how to start your first cosplay. And if you can't sew hot glue, peace out. You said work it, and I immediately started going... Let me work it. Put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. I don't know why the derkadur is part of the words. That's just not a real word. You can't not sing it.